Welcome to Love Talk. I'm Gregory Morgan. The purpose of the show is to speak with you and share with you about the things that I've found that have worked in relationships, in, in all types of relationships, but particularly in romantic relationships, marriage, dating, love, sex. Those kind of relationships are the relationships with which we struggle the most. Obviously, people who are struggling in those relationships then go on to have children. They struggle in their relationships with their children. Their children struggle in their relationships with their parents because there are basic fundamental desires that we as human beings all have and we all share. And we each have a control strategy, if you will, that is designed to get those things that we need. And this control strategy, some of it you have absorbed from your environment. In other words, there are cultural control strategies. And some of it you have uh, absorbed from your religion, but mostly you have absorbed it from the male and female caregivers that raised you. That would usually be your parents, but it's not always your parents. Sometimes people are raised by others than their parents. And nonetheless, the gender has a lot to do with how we later relate to the opposite sex. Believe it or not, you have learned your relationship with the opposite sex mostly from how your mother or father related to you as a very small child before you could even understand words or what was going on. You picked up on facial gestures, tonal intonations, voice inflections, body posture, the velocity and intensity with which a communication was delivered, whether it was soft and loving or whether it was intense and powerful or abrasive and aggressive. All of these things are interpreted by the nervous system prior to your in intellectual understanding of even what's going on or prior to language. In any event, Love Talk is about addressing some of those issues, and I'd much rather have a dialogue than a monologue, so I'm going to go ahead and take this first call. Thank you. Hello, this is Gregory. You're live on the air. Hi, how are you? And, uh, I have a question about my son. I don't know that my son growing up is about 20. He's, every day I feel that it's distance from me and the house. I don't know how he's going out, he's coming late in the afternoon, like about 12 o'clock. He's yeah. at me most of the time. I don't know how to deal with him. I'm not sure that what he's doing outside. He's studying the university, telling me that I'm in the university but he doesn't have a good mark mm -hmm. and I exactly don't know it makes me worry sometimes that what he's doing when I text him call him most of the time he's not answering me Right. When he leaves, leave, when he come back, come back home. Great. I'm glad you asked that question because it, it is a question that is so vitally important to mothers all over the world, but to mothers of young men, men who are perhaps not yet grown into their full manhood, and yet we call them men because, after all, they are mature, they're older than 18 years old, and they've got testosterone, and their voice has dropped, and they're young men, and yet they're not boys anymore either. So they're not boys, they're not men, and they're attempting to grow into manhood. And what mothers have a very, throughout history, so you're not the first, okay? Throughout history, mothers have had a difficulty in this child, which they gave birth to, nurtured, breastfed, took through the phases of childhood and adolescence, now needs vitally very, very much to move away from her and in order to be a man. It is an essential part, so I'm, I'm gonna repeat that maybe in several different ways, but it is an essential part of becoming a man to move away from the mother, move away from her psychically, emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. That needs to be done in the most peaceful and loving and respectful way possible. However, mothers not understanding this phenomenon often cling to the sons for far too long than they should because of their lack of understanding and their own personal needs because they've invested 18 years of their lifetime in raising this creature who now wants to go on his own direction. I realize that it's often more painful for the mother than it is for the son, but this separation must take place. Only when a boy has separated from a mother and been initiated by wiser, older, 
wiser, initiated men. And this is the other thing that is missing in our society and why you're worried and why you should be worried. Because there are very few older, wiser men who are actually taking on the task of initiating young men into manhood in an in a way of honor and integrity, respectfully assuming the authority and the responsibility of being a man in society. So what we have is young boys being raised by their peers who themselves are young and uninitiated boys, trying to be men. For the most part, trying unsuccessfully. So what do they do? They they drive their cars fast, they get tattoos, they pierce their ears, they, they walk around unshaven, uh, they drink, they cuss, they do, they do manly-like things. Usually the lower vibrational or lower category of masculine behavior, which does not represent what it means to be a man, but it may be some of the bad habits of men that's easy to pick up from movies, books, and the other young men, young uninitiated men in your environment. So we have boys being raised by boys, the men who themselves were probably raised by boys and so therefore not initiated into manhood by older wiser men are allowing this to happen because honestly, frankly, they don't know what to do. They've yeah. never been initiated. They've never even noticed that anything was missing for them except that somehow there's this sort of dissatisfaction and sort of resistance to women and yet attraction, resistance, attraction resistance which is a phenomenon that is a result of in other words it's a yeah it's not the cause it's the result it's the effect of having never been initiated to manhood so that you are actually somebody who knows beyond any question of doubt that you could be relied upon with your own life, you could save your own life. You could take care of yourself. You have the wherewithal, the intelligence, the ability, the physical strength, the mental acuity to take care of yourself, first of all. And with that and with other men in life comes a natural sense of responsibility, a sense of love of humanity, a sense of wanting to take care of others. It's a natural thing to want to take care of others once you yourself are strong and secure in your identity, in your physicality, in your mental stability, in your emotional and ability, your emotional intelligence, your ability to sort of see and interpret what's going on and, and relate to it in a way that, that is healthy and reliable, and in a spiritual connection with something greater than yourself. That's what it is to be a man. No one's teaching that. No one's taking that on as part of life itself, as an essential part of life itself. So, what you're experiencing as a mother is absolutely natural. You have some worry that, you know, what's he out there doing? But the other thing is, what he's experiencing is absolutely natural. When a boy grows up and starts getting an excess of testosterone and, you know, being attracted to, to girls and sometimes guys, who knows, but I mean, they become sexually active. There's a competitive, aggressive part of the masculine hormonal identity that needs to be expressed and cannot be expressed around the woman who changed your diapers, told you to go sit down and be quiet, what to eat, where to, how to dress. In other words, there's no room for that kind of masculine expression when mommy's around. But you can understand that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the very thought of mommy sort of kills off that whole idea of being a man. So only when they have moved away from mommy can, and become a man, and that may take six months, it may take a year, it may take a couple of years, or it might take a weekend in my workshop, because that's what happens there. Men become men. Even men who are 40, 50 years old who never have been initiated into manhood, they leave there saying, I feel like for the first time in my life I've become a man. I know what it is to be a man. And it's not some kind of macho thing like everybody thinks it, it might be when you say be a man. No, it's about learning how to forgive, how to love, how to be gentle, how to take care of human beings. Be gentle with yourself and quit being so men are brutal on themselves. One of the absolute natural outcomes of that is that men become very, very movingly, like brings tears to your eyes to see it and to hear it and to, and to be with it. They become very, very lovingly 
I'll say it in better English. They, they very, very lovingly turn back to their mothers. As long as you're a boy, you need a mom. As long as you're a man, you could actually take care of your mom. You actually want to help her be happy, uh, give her things that she needs, give back to her the things that you've gone out and earned for yourself as a man because of her good teaching, her good upbringing, her gentleness. You know, all the good, gentle things that are in me, I realized way too late in life because my mother had already passed that I really got them from her. I got so many good things from her, the, the, the good, kind, gentle, forgiving, compassionate part of me mostly came from her. And the tough, ready for anything, kind of courageous and sometimes mean part of me, I got it from my dad. You know, fathers are here to teach us to to be tough and be ready for life. I believe mothers are here to teach us to be kind and generous and loving in life. Both are necessary to be a husband and a father, to be a warrior, to go out and, and earn a living in a competitive world where there's 50 other guys that want your job and they may be younger and smarter and faster than you. So you gotta be tough to be a man and make money in this world or even to compete in the college arena, right? Not everybody gets into the college that he's wanting to get into. So I didn't mean to give you too long of an answer, but I wanted to take the opportunity to for the audience to realize an important part of being a man is to move away from the mother so that you could come back as a man. The child must die in order for the man to be born. Now, when I say die, I don't mean they literally die, but that childhood part of them, that needy asking for permission from mommy part of them has to go away, has to end somewhere. You're supposed to grow out of that and mature at some point. And mothers are guilty of keeping those boys boys for far too long. I absolutely I agree with your point. One thing that it's very hard for me, when he's out, mm -hmm. you know, we talk that he's spending what he's doing, and it makes me worry, and I don't like this feeling. I shouldn't project my worries or anger on him. Absolutely not. Your worry is your worry. Your emotional state is your emotional state. Your limitations are your limitations. Your fears are yours and yours alone. Please do not project your fears, your limitations, your worries, doubts, and all of that onto any other human being, especially not your children. You, just because you're an, a mother, and you have been for at least 20 years, does not mean that you are done learning, madam. You are, and in many ways, you're just beginning to start learning. You see, part of being a whole human being may include being a parent, but parenthood is for life. There's parent of an adolescent, there's parent of a teenager, right? There's parent of, of a young person, and then there's grandparent. In other words, your learning will continue, hopefully for you, for your entire life. And each time you will come to something that, like you just said, this is hard for me. Okay, it's hard for you. I got it. It's not easy. I understand. But it's your growth, and it has nothing to do with him. Your fears have nothing to do with him. And what he does when he's out, okay, I'm going to say this, and I want you to hear it like I mean it. Unless it is illegal, immoral, unethical, or dangerous to your health and well-being, it's none of your business. It's dangerous to his health. If it's dangerous to himself, that's his business. It's his body, his life. Sorry, you gave it to him. You got him this far, but there's a point at which you have to let go and say, I've given you the best I can. I've taught you how to drive. I've done, you know, I've given you all this stuff. Now it's up to you as a man to not go out and get yourself killed. But it's his business. If he joins the Marines, he could get killed in training. If he drives a car, he could get killed. You can't stop that. I can't. Nobody can. No one. Yeah. Right? But here's the thing. It's highly, highly likely that he will live to be an old man. It's pretty likely, don't you think? Yeah, I got the point. Yeah, he, it's pretty likely that he's not going to starve to death. Pretty likely that die somehow or end up broke or destitute. You know, it's pretty likely. A young man raised in a Persian family who is going to college, I don't say they always turn out, but they, they usually turn out okay, don't they? Yeah, they usually turn out okay. Some of them are messed up and some of them aren't, but I mean, you have given him your best, haven't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, you got your job done. You got him this far. Now he's, you got to let him, your next job is to let him become a man and let him know, I'm your mother, I love you, I release you, and I trust you as a man.
to take care of yourself and to do what's right because I've taught you what's right and I expect you to do it and if you need my advice or anything like that I'm here please don't give your advice to men that don't ask for it if a man doesn't ask for your advice don't give it to him it's disrespectful and they will resist you you ever try to give advice to him and he like doesn't want to hear it yeah you're right the men don't like to get advice that they don't ask for so what i'm telling you as a mother my guidance to you is to please let him know i'm here if you need me if you want my advice i'll give it to you otherwise i'm not going to give you my advice i'm going to keep my mouth shut out of respect for you as a young man uh, who needs to take his own path in life you wouldn't believe watch you'll you'll hear a sigh of relief from him i release you i trust you as a man i've given you the best i can if you need anything from me i'm here if he says, yeah, here's what I need from you. I need you to let me lay around on the couch and smoke pot all day and drop out of school. There's limits to what you must offer him, okay? Yeah, yeah I need you to pay all my bills because I, I don't feel like going to school. I don't feel like you know, working and being a responsible man. If that happens, then your job is to kick him out and tell him, to, it's no, 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 it's time for you to go be a man. Many times, that, how, many, how many mothers do you know that that's happened to? who have 30-year-olds living at their house doing nothing. Do you know some? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they just lay around and do nothing because their mothers didn't want to let go of them, and now they've got the worst thing that they could happen, a big, hairy, older, directionless kid who should be somebody's father by now, right? Instead, he's still you're, you're, you're still mothering them. I'm, I don't mean you, but the, the mothers that are listening that, are, that have 30-year-old kids at home, that has everything to do with not understanding how important it is. I um, don't mean to make a too fine of a point of it, but it's extremely important that for a, a boy to separate from the mother and join the men. That's always happened throughout society because men understood that if a young man wasn't initiated into manhood, he became toxic to society. Toxic in many ways. Disrespectful to women, uncaring for children, lazy or mean and aggressive. His sexual aggressiveness could, could uh, cause a lot of problems. I've said it many times on this show, uh, you and I, the, re <laughs> the reason we're looking over our shoulder in parking lots or uh, locking our doors at night is because of young unmarried men, not because of young unmarried women, not because of married men. We're not worried about them, right? Society is plagued by toxic young unmarried men who were never initiated. Instead of those them being our heroes, they're our problem. And older societies knew this, knew that they would become a problem if the older men didn't take them in hand and teach them respect, teach them how to handle their power in a useful way. Young men are very, very powerful. That's why we use them as soldiers and send them to war. They're very aggressive and powerful. So you don't try to mother an aggressive, powerful young man. Say, go be powerful and be responsible. But how about when, they, when he asks, like, I want to borrow your car or did I need my pocket money? Yeah, or say, I what are you going to do for me? Yeah, what are you going to do for me? What are you going to do to earn it? Say, what do you need? Yeah. Tell, tell him I need you to clean up the garage. I need you to, uh, listen, when I was five, six, seven years old, I, I didn't get money unless I shined the shoes, washed the car, cut the grass. I had to do something, do the dishes. I had to do something. So, and I got very early in life that you do something useful to society and you get paid for it. You know, you, you, there's an exchange of energy. And, I, and I'm so glad my father taught me that. I'm so glad my father taught me that. At the time, there were, I wanted big things, and so I had to do big things to get them. I spent my summer, you know, painting the garage and things like that so that I could earn uh, the things that I wanted. But nowadays, it's like, I want a cell phone. I want a computer. I want a car. I want yeah. my insurance policy. I want free rent. I want free food. Cook my food. Do my laundry. Clean up my mess. Go to pay for my college, you know, so they don't ever learn. And it's not just about the value of money. It's about the, the value of feeling personally like I can do anything and I can get anything I want because I know how to go out and work harder or if I have to and, and be smart and, and get what I need. That's what a man does. Don't make him into a boy, okay? I got other callers on the line, so I'm going to go ahead and take the calls. Thank you so much. Thank you for your call. Let me know how that turns out. Okay. Thank you for holding. This is Gregory. You're live on the air. I just wanted to know because I was <clears> just, uh, you know, being 
yo-yo dieting with my weight. I uh, just mm -hmm. wondered how did you lose so much weight? Yes, I lost about 35 pounds. Part of it has to do with just making an irrevocable decision to do so. Uh, I'm going to listen um, through TV if you well, don't have any. I'd, no, I'd rather have an interaction than give a lecture to an, in, to an answer. So let, let's have an interaction, okay? You say you've been yo-yoing. How long have you been doing that? Over a year now. And how much weight are we talking about? that you would like to lose? I'm trying to lose 50 pounds. Okay, that's pretty substantial. You know, that's a substantial thing. In order to lose that kind of weight, there's several layers of things that you will need to go through. And I'm not just talking about physical layers. You've probably heard me speak of us humans as being a multi-dimensional occurrence, uh, meaning that you are not just a physical body with a soul in it or something, right? But you are a mental, emotional and spiritual happening that has a physical manifestation. You are physically manifesting something that's mostly invisible. The physical part of you, in other words, your body, is a, it's like a printout, if you will. It, when you go to your computer and you type and you, you make a Word document and you print it out and it finally comes out of the computer, most of what has gone on there is invisible. It's in the background, right? Yeah. There's all kinds of me mechanical and, and electrical things going on that you and I don't understand unless you're a computer programmer or build computers or something. And then the, the result of it comes out of the printer over there and it's a piece of paper with some writing on it arranged in a certain way, right? All the mental processes that went on to have that happen are all invisible and there, now there's this physical manifestation called a Word document. I use that example because you and I are very much like that. Who you are is a vast, powerful occurrence, it's something that is, that is happening. It is mental, emotional, spiritual, and it has a physical aspect to it. So to think that you could operate on the physical part and have an effective or a satisfactory result, can you see how that would be back, kind of backwards? Really, no. You don't. If there was something wrong in my computer and it kept making the Word document I was trying to print out have giant, big, fat print on it, right? right. And it, what? And I was trying to, would it work for me to work on the paper? No, it doesn't. How about the ink? No. How about the printer itself? Maybe. How about it's probably in the program someplace and that what's getting printed out is exactly what the program is telling it to do. Something emotionally, mentally, spiritually something that you can't see. If we cut you open, we wouldn't see anything in there, just body. Something that is not visible to the eye is telling your body to, to be like that. So you can diet all you want, but as, if you don't change the mental and the spiritual and the physical, and the, I mean the emotional, then, then it just keeps coming back. That's why we say yo-yo. I go this way and then there's a, another way of speaking to that is that you and I have things that we say we are committed to I'm committed to losing 50 pounds. You didn't say that. You said, I want to lose 50 pounds. The inner part of you makes the outer part of you. As you are within, so you, will you be without. And so without resolving whatever inner issues you have going on, you can diet all you want. So your question to me was, how did I do it? Basically unique to me, uh, I resolved some things inside myself that had me carrying around an extra 30 pounds and then saying I didn't want that 30 pounds or trying to lose 30 pounds, but always getting it back. So I had like a 10 or 20 pound range of weight that I kept losing and getting back and losing and getting back and losing and getting back for about 30 years. 25, 30 years. I never could quite get the right diet, so I went from diet to diet to diet, but it wasn't until I made what I said earlier an irrevocable, an irrevocable meaning I cannot go back on decision that this shall be. And when I did, I took a 23-day very intensive diet that, that completely cleared that up, but the, the thing that happened in the 23 days is that I got back control of my life. And that means I got back control of what I put in my mouth and how much and when. And uh, there were a lot of foods that I had been eating all of my life that I thought were good for you. But I later in this diet, I studied and found out that there are certain things that will actually have you have intestinal problems 
and always keep some weight on as a reaction to that food. Not that the food itself made you fat, but that your body reacted to it by, uh, by storing fat cells. So there was a lot of scientific understanding that I didn't have before, and, uh, but, but mostly it was a, a mental and emotional taking into hand of something that I uh, had pretty much just let go. I, I was super disciplined throughout my lifetime as a martial artist and a dancer, and so I never had an ounce of fat on me, and I was all muscle. And then there was a point in my life at which I just let all that go, and I said, okay, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to be concerned about that anymore. And so, you know, over time, I gained a bunch of weight. It wasn't all of a sudden. It was just like every year. And I took that for granted. I just thought, eh, it's no big deal. And then I started trying to lose it, and I couldn't. Hello, this is Gregory. You're live on the air. You know, it's a situation I never have been. What's the situation? They sent me in a very, very rough area in New York. And uh, I'm a Persian woman. You're teaching in a rough area in New York, and you're a Persian woman? Yes. Yes. O okay. And this is happening uh, last couple of weeks. I don't want to quit, but I don't know. I'm coming home. Rained. You're you're becoming afraid. Yes. Well, sometimes it's appropriate to be afraid. I'm you're, becoming depressed. I'm <clears throat> oh, you're becoming depressed. That's not appropriate. Depressed. When yeah. I come home, I'm totally depressed. Well, nothing is more important than your well-being. Okay. Without it, everything else is so what, right? You could have all the money in the world, all the any everything else, but if you're not well, that's kind of like so what. Right? The first thing you want to do is make sure that you are well, and that means mentally well, emotionally well, and certainly physically well. Are you afraid for your physical well-being when you go into this, this neighborhood? Are you afraid you're going to get hurt? This is a place, this is a school that uh, students are getting a higher education than normal. But okay. because of the area, the neighborhood, a lot of students are very rough. So some of my classes are very well, but some certain age, like 14-year-old, Boys yeah. and girls, uh -huh. out of control. And it's not all about money. It's about I don't want to quit. It's a failure for me. Turn my back. So okay, I just want to teach in a good area. Got it. Okay, so this is your learning. This is where you have to grow and develop yourself. See, I firmly believe that you've called the right place because I have a company called Embrace Growth. And that name is not just some name that we thought would be cool. It's actually a not so subtle suggestion. It's a suggestion and a command to embrace whatever is put in front of you. See, I believe that life does not present you with anything that you're unprepared to deal with. No matter how hard it may seem or no matter how difficult that challenge may be. Now, you don't have to take every challenge that's put before you. You can turn away, but something inside of you is telling you, I don't want to. I would listen to that voice because whatever it is that wants to take on this challenge and not be uh, run off by it, afraid of it, I believe that is the voice of growth. So whatever challenge you have is going to challenge you to become bigger than you currently are. And isn't that great? Now, I don't know what's going to prepare you for that because I'm not sure. I Listen, I understand tough kids. I understand bad neighborhoods because I grew up in one and I, and I was one. You don't look like one. <laughs> well, I've cleaned myself up, but I've been kicked out of every school I was ever in when I was a kid. I was the one that was always getting in fights and causing trouble. The school system in my town said, we don't want them in our school system. That's a little bit about me, but I just to give you enough background to let you know that I know what kind of people you're dealing with, and I can also understand having, you know, I've been a teacher, I've taught martial arts, and I've taught a number of things. You know, I learned martial arts because, not because I wanted to learn to be tougher, I wanted to learn to control my own violence. I was telling an earlier caller that young men needed to have older men to, uh, older, wiser men to teach them to train their aggressiveness into useful ways. And so I found that through martial arts classes at an early age. But as far as you're dealing with what you need to do, maybe you do need to take a martial arts class. Maybe you need to, do you feel physically unsafe? Very good shape, yes. You do feel physically unsafe? Oh, no, 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 not at all. Oh, okay, so you don't feel physically threatened. They're not going to hurt you, in other words. Oh, no, no, not at all. Oh, okay, great. Well, that's good news, isn't it? When I hear tough neighborhood, I hear like, okay, kids carrying weapons and, you know, acting out violently or something. So that's not happening. Mind, I'm sorry to interrupt you. It's a mind that emotionally brings me down. 
don't want me to in the classroom. They look at me as a teacher. They want me back and have that uh, uh, kind of clumsy teacher back. That's their plan. And I see they're all working together to do that, emotionally trying to bring me down. Okay, well, you're not, are you going to let them win that? Oh, no. No. I don't think you are. I think that you got to where you are today because you're the, exactly the person they need to have to show them whatever it is they need to learn to have respect, to have compassion, to have some fun, and to learn something. I think, what are you teaching? Computer science. Technology. So, technology? Yes. Great. Now, are they in this class because they want to be or because they have to be? They have to be. Yeah. Great. I don't know. Why don't you tell them, look, all of those that don't want to learn technology, why don't you go sit in the back of the room and read comic books and leave the rest of us alone? And those of you that want to learn technology, you've come to the right place because I know technology. And you please move up to the front of the class, and I'm going to teach you everything I know. And the rest of you, just, you know, don't bother us. The interesting part is that they send me to senior students to teach tough parts. i late in this year, and had to take this, this freshman. Yeah. Going through this, somehow I have the same feeling that I had to go through this experience. It's something if I if I quit here somewhere else, uh, yeah. pop up in front of my in front of me, I had to go through it anyway. That's right. That's very wise of you to say that. I always say that the person who leaves the lesson before it is learned is destined to repeat it. Thank you for learning your lesson while it's in front of you because usually when you leave the lesson before you learn it when you repeat it it's worse totally it happened to me a few times escape change my place uh -huh. work again i go back i don't know why i quit from that beautiful college i decided to go to high school and this is it <laughs> now the college thing probably looks pretty good doesn't it <laughs> actually i don't know why something inside me says you have to go through this well that's it, it's good that you listen to this voice in you I, I really appreciate this about you. Seriously, listen to this voice. It sounds like you, like many other teachers, are guided by something that's good and quiet and wise, and, 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 and I would follow that counsel, all right? If this is something that you need to go through, then, then learn the lesson, because I'm certain that if you put yourself in that position, it's because you really love to teach people. You really love to help people get on with their life and, and to have a better life. I believe that about you. But in what price? Just to come home, be happy, mom, happy mom, take care of my kids, having fun with them, making well, a nice dinner, mm -hmm. enjoy the evening, even going to gym. Now I've come home fresh and drained. Okay, well, you're, that's because you need to, what I call, decontate. You, uh, you, you need to take off the teacher thing, and you may, need to, you may need to have a little ritual. You may need to have a little ritual where, okay, I'm done being a teacher for the day. I'm going to take off my teacher clothes. I don't know if that means I'm going to go to a yoga class or whatever it is, the gym. I'm going to uh, take a shower or whatever it is for you so that you switch from one coat of armor to another. You have to take off your, put down your sword and pick up, put on your dress, so to speak. Many of us have different hats that we wear, different, different roles or personas that we have to fill, fulfill. You might not, you don't want to be like a mother when you're in class teaching technology, right? And you don't want to be like a tech teacher when you're with your kids. And when you're with your friends at the gym, you don't want to be like a mother or a tech teacher. You want to just be yourself as a woman being at the gym. And so it's okay to have to mark the point and to and you may need to do something. You know, I have little habits that I do that sort of like puts an end to the day. And then, you know, now I'm in a different personality, a different frame, a different state of mind. It has to do with, take, you know, changing my shoes or changing my clothes. You know, I have some clothes that I like to wear at home that are more comfortable and, and so forth, right? And so I make a shift. Sometimes I go and sit outside and just enjoy the evening alone with nobody there but me until I feel kind of like I want to interact with people. Then I get up from my chair and I go do whatever I'm going to do for the evening. You absolutely don't advise. I don't advise what? Leaving? Yes. Oh, definitely not. You have this challenge. You brought it upon yourself. You had an inner voice that told you you need to go do this. Don't you dare walk away from that lesson until you've mastered it. Be a master. Try, fail, try, fail. And so what if you, I, I mean, you, don't think I'm being cold or callous. Hear me as I mean it. So what if you don't like it? So what? Mm. 
Who said you're supposed to like everything? Who said that everything's supposed to make you happy? It's not. That's a child's imagination. As an adult, you know that you like some things and some things you don't. That's why they call it work. It's not supposed to be pleasant. I mean, hopefully you can make it pleasant and that you will enjoy it and be satisfied by it. They pay you for it because it's hard to do. Not everybody could do it. Actually, my decision, final decision is that learn how to deal with this kind of students, then leave. Or stay and transform their environment. Have your transformation count in the world. Be a legend. Be a master. You don't have to be. Being a master is not an obligation. Most people never will be. But how many people have you met in your life who are so good at what they do that wherever they go, they make a difference with the people there? Whether they're a master piano player, a master teacher, a master basketball player, when they do their thing, everybody benefits. Everybody gets some joy and satisfaction from it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Being a master teacher is a great honor. It could go anywhere, in any environment, any time, and make a difference with any kind of people. That takes something. Can you believe it? Other teachers enjoy to watch me? Struggling? Yeah, I believe it. Listen, that's just them. Don't worry about other people. Don't worry about what other people like or dislike. Other people have their own jealousies and their own deal stuff that they're dealing with. You have a challenge in front of you. You say it's making you feel depressed. Depression, by definition, means think, feel, think, feel, with no action to do anything about it. You're smarter than that. You think, you feel, then you take action. And one of the actions you took was calling this show. That's an action. You did that. Most people will never do that. That's an action. You got some input from somebody else who themselves is a teacher and who themselves has had to go into bad places and try to make a difference with people who, where I felt unwanted, uninvited, unneeded, and disliked. And I've had to go and, and teach them and give my best and make a difference with them and turn them around. And that made me have to change something in myself. And one of the things I had to change was my attitude about whether I should like things or not. I, I, I decided, you know what, this is what I'm good at and who, who cares whether I like it or not. And I'm so glad that I did that because my, it, it's not only changed my life, but the lives of thousands of people around the world now who take our workshops and our, and our seminars. And, and it, my Mastering something inside myself has now made a difference with other people, whether I'm there or not. Okay? Thanks a lot. You bet. Okay. Thank you for calling. Bye bye. Thanks. Thank you for holding. You are now live on the air. This is Gregory. Uh, hello, Gregory. Um, I'm 40 from London. My name is Sam. Hi, Sam. How are you, Gregory? Hey. I grew up in, um, Gregory, as they say in the film in Houston, we have a problem. Gregory, <laughs> a problem. What's the problem? I hope it's not landing something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Gregory, my problem is, 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 is my, my son, who yep. is a gentle, kind, professional, I mean, you couldn't get a better person than that. He's been going out with this girl, he was 16. This is about 11 years now they're together. My wife absolutely doesn't want to know about her. He, he cares for her. And my wife, I back my wife. Right or wrong, I back her up. If bad, I back her up because she's always been right. Sooner or later, her that point is, is being proven. And uh, she, my wife, doesn't want to know about her. I don't think she, my, his girlfriend particularly done anything bad. She just does not get involved with the Persian community because she feels uncomfortable. And even you know, when she's with my sisters, because they've, they've turned British a bit, she's very relaxed, dance, music, but when she comes to our community, she's hold back. She sits back. And it's just a question, answer, question, answer. She doesn't get involved. She doesn't get up, wash the dishes. You know, we Iranian family, we like them to, hello, you know, how are you? And, and get involved. Just don't get that. My wife doesn't get that from her. They, so that, uh, can, I, can I interrupt you just for a second, just because I want to make sure that I understand what you've said so far. Your son has been seeing the same girl since he was 16, so he must be around 27? That's about right, yes. Yeah, okay, something like that. And then is it the mother that wants nothing to do with the girlfriend? Right. And does the girlfriend come around? And, and I think I heard you say something about the, the girlfriend doesn't want to get involved with the family or something. I, I wasn't sure if it was the wife or the girlfriend that didn't like to uh, get involved with Persian community. Uh. Uh, but she, she was okay at the beginning. Who? The wife? Your wife was okay? Yeah, everybody was okay at the beginning. With and the, uh, okay. it just, uh, she wasn't, she wasn't uh, committing as much as my wife was committing, trying to bring her in our community, bring her her hard to cook and things like that and yeah. and she's tried everything but it's something 
My wife says, I know this girl is not going to be good for my son. And my son is suffering. Mm -hmm. He loves us to be. We are very, very, I believe we are. And my wife is very good parents to him. We gave him a good education. He's a hospital. We gave him a love and tenderness, a gentleman. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't drink. He does not, 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 not there's anything wrong with that. He just yeah, he just doesn't. He's he's he run, He lives a clean, healthy life. So here's you know at at first glance the the first thing that I want to say is that as a 27 year old man, you have released him into manhood, hopefully, and said, "Son, I've given you the best I can. You're free to go and." live your life as a man and I'm here as a resource for you if you need advice if you if you need support in anything I'm your dad I'm gonna be here for you and that his mother would have said something like that to him so that he got the distinct knowledge that he was on his own as a man and that he had the love and support of his parents who trusted him to be a man and to you know listen it's his life if he chooses a horrible woman and screws up his whole life, it's it, it concerns you. It will hurt you. It may even cost you money if you choose to go down that road. But it is none of your business. He's a man, and you need to like treat him like one and only give him your advice if he asks for it. And whatever woman that he brings into your house, if he says, this is my woman and I've been with her for 11 years, if he's been with this woman for 11 years, that's his wife. They may not have gotten married and, you know, done all the things that make it official, but if he's had a long-term committed monogamous sexual relationship with a woman for 10 or 11 years, guess what? That's his wife. That's not just a girlfriend anymore. Do they live together? My wife, you know, we're buying a property, they, they, they live together, we're buying a property for them, but the girl said, I don't want your family to be involved any financial with this house. I respect that, don't you? The family. Don't you respect that? That's a very respectable attitude. I respect that. She wants to feel like her life with this man who she's chosen and who has chosen her and they've been through listen in 11 years they've been through some stuff right they've been through some emotional roller coasters some ups and downs some breakups some heartbreaks some healing some forgiving they've been through stuff you don't get be with somebody for 11 years without going through some very uh important growth processes and so she's saying look this is my life with this man and uh i don't want to be owing anybody anything now, if you want to give him some free money and say, look, buy property with it if you want to, or spend it or blow it or, you know, lose it, that's your business. But if you, uh, many times parents will buy real estate and then now the children are somehow obliged to them because that's where they live, but it's in the parent's name or something. Do you understand it? They, there's like, there's an uneasiness, like it's not my home, it's their home. Now, if you want to give him a home free and clear in his name and her name so that they own it, that's a different story. But she's she's trying to declare her independence from your family, and I don't blame her for that. That's I respect that. Well, 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 we look at it a different way. We think she wants him totally not controlled by us. Uh, well, I do too. I want him to be totally not controlled by you. And he wants to be totally not controlled by you. How dare you try to control another human being's life? I don't care if you raised him. What about the love and affection? What about the love? Love, love and affection is freely the given. We, we broke him. We, we, did, we didn't pick him up in the street. We actually did we give him love. We broke him up. We of course you did. I don't, I don't mean that. But love and affection is freely given. It is either a gift. When you give a gift, the person has a right. It's theirs now. It's not yours anymore. If you're... Experience, we, have, we have more experience. We know... So what? My wife knows that... I, no, I, be, I believe you, and I'm on your side. Please get this. I'm on your side, but unless you want to lose your son, stop con trying to control him. Give up your right freely, or he will take it away from you. Give up your right to have any control on his life whatsoever. Freely give him his adulthood. That's what a man deserves no man wants more than anything else than to have his father say put his hand on his heart and say son i gave you the best i can i love you 
I will always love you. I respect you as a man. I respect your decisions. And even though I may not always agree with them, son, I will support you mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, not financially. I will support your decisions because I know that you have the intelligence and the wherewithal to make the decisions for your life. And if you fail and fall down and screw your life up, you have a right to do that. I, I hope you don't, and I'm here to help you if you do, but you're free. You're 100% free. You're a man. Go live as a man. Gregory, can we, what we are getting at, mm -hmm. now he decided, okay, I'm going to buy the property with my own money, I'm short of 10,000 pounds, and my wife says, you're not having it. Okay. If you're going to be your money, you're not going to give it just to make it. Before, two days ago, we're going to give it 40,000 pounds, but now if you want to be on your own, you're a man, you decide, you're not going to pay a penny. Great. It's just not, not because of the money, it's just because of... Yeah, because she wants to be in control, which is shame on her. Seriously, I mean that in every sense of the word. That is shameful behavior. That is shameful. There is no honor in that, and I do not respect that type of behavior. You try to control somebody with money, shame on you. Anybody, shame on you. We're doing it for his own... His own no, you're not. You're doing it for your own sense of well-being so that you could feel like you're in control of something, that you own something. If you really want to do something for his well-being and you called a guy and asked him who teaches honor, integrity, and mastery workshops for men, you and your son should come to this workshop and you would never, ever think of wanting to control one thing about him after that. You would be ashamed of any impulse that you had to ever want to try to control another man. Okay, what happened? What happened? Okay, they go ahead, they buy a property. We don't like each other. Especially the wife doesn't like like. That's his business, not yours. What is going to be? What type of relation is going to be between the, my son, his girlfriend, or his ex, future wife? Where will he stand? What's, how, how are we going to talk? How, how are we going to, what's going to happen? It's so none of your happen? business. It is none of your business. You're trying to make it your business. If a guy down the street who was 27 years old and liked a girl that you didn't like and wanted to buy some property, would you stick your nose in his business? Nothing to do with me, no. Of course not. It's none of your business. And you don't get it. You think that because you raised this boy that you can hold on to him and treat him like he's still your boy. And that is the most disrespectful thing you could possibly do to a man is treat him like a boy. That's disrespectful. Okay. We just try to protect him. Financially. It's none of your business. It's not your business to protect him. It's his business to make sound decisions in life and to pay for it when he messes up, mm. just like you did. Did you make mistakes in your life? Plenty, yeah. Did you hurt people? Try not to, but yes. Not. Yeah, you did. And did people hurt you? Yes. And did you have to get your crap together and, and pull yourself together and, and start all over sometimes? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. He deserves to have that too. That's part of being a, a man. That's part of being an adult. He deserves to have that. And if you deprive him of that, you will have a 35, 40, 50 year old boy. And those boys are toxic to women. They're toxic to society and they're toxic to themselves. They become alcoholics. They have heart attacks. They become drug addicts. They become, uh, they become abusers. Uh, they, they, they get involved with gambling. They, they cheat in, in business. They, they become t toxic. They're always causing some kind of problem. Okay. And they think mom and dad's going to fix it for them. But mom and dad died 20 years ago. And now they still got a problem because they never grew up. Get, if, if, do it for him. Do it for society. Let men be men and, and be a father to him, but not a daddy. A father after the age of 20 is your good companion. He's a man who respectfully stands back and says, okay, I've given you the best I can. Prove yourself as a man. If you fall down and you need help, ask me and I'll, and I'll be there. But you don't offer help that's not asked for. That's disrespectful. If it's not asked for, don't offer it. He has to learn to ask for the help he needs. He has to overcome his pride and his ego and say, Dad, I need some help. I want to buy this property, but I need some money. I don't have enough. I, I want to work for it. I want to own it, and I want the property in my name. Either give him a free gift, meaning you completely release it. If you lose it, you lose it. It's not a loan. It's free money. I'm giving it to you. If you want to pay it back someday, you can, but I'm not expecting it. And you're free to do whatever you want with it. If you want to give him a free gift, give it to him for free. That's what a gift means. I give you this. It's I release all ownership. You owe me nothing. When you give a gift with a string attached, it's not a gift. It's a lie. Posing is a gift. It's a manipulation. It's a way to get control of somebody. And if it, personally, if 
if you wanted to, to describe evil, I would think that that would be a pretty good description. Making somebody believe that you're freely giving them something when in fact you're trying to control them with it. That's pretty bad as far as I'm concerned. I don't respect it. So, I'm, I, you know, you, this is your learning process. It's your son. You called and asked my point of view. I, I really, really hope that you will respect yourself and your son enough to freely release him into manhood and let him make his own mistakes. Everybody has a right to make mistakes and to screw their life up. That's how you get back control of your life because now you did that. You, you know you messed it up and you know you put it back together and you corrected yourself. And then nobody can ever take that away from you. Embrace Growth has a new home online where you can easily register for workshops and events, order from the online store, and be part of the worldwide community of Embrace Growth graduates. You'll be able to see Dr. Rosita Sion and Mr. Gregory Morgan in your favorite seminars. Visit us today at embracegrowth.com. در کارگاه‌های آموزشی بانوان به رهبری دکتر آزیتا سایان خود واقعیتان و همچنین مردان را بشناسید و با استفاده از قدرت زنانه خود روابطی سالم و عاشقانه بسازید. همبورگ 28 فوریه تا اول مارچ، لس آنجلس 17 تا 19 آوریل، تورنتو 26 تا 28 جون و ایروان ارمنستان 6 تا 8 آگوست برگزار خواهد شد. 310 460 2600 embracegrowth.com اپلیکیشن Embrace Growth با ساختن اکانت شخصی شما می توانید وارد پروفایل خود شده و تنظیمات آن را تغییر دهید. به تمامی رویدادها و محصولات دسترسی داشته باشید. با چند کلیک برای سمینارها و کارگاه ها ثبت نام کنید و یا وقت مشاوره خود را رزرو نمایید. اپلیکیشن Embrace Growth را امروز از اپ استور دانلود کنید و به خانواده جهانی Embrace Growth بپیوندید. یک مرد منحصر به فرد، مسلط، متمرکز، قابل اعتماد و رضایتمند باشید. کارگاه شرافت، عزت کلام و مهارت به رهبری دکتر آزیتا سایان. لس آنجلس 13 تا 15 مارچ، تورنتو 16 تا 18 اکتبر و ایروان ارمنستان 5 تا 7 نوامبر. برای اطلاعات بیشتر با شماره 310 460 2600 تماس بگیرید. اپلیکیشن Embrace Growth همکنون در اپ استور با ساختن اکانت شخصی شما می توانید پروفایل خود را مدیریت و زبان مورد نظر خود را بین فارسی و انگلیسی انتخاب کنید. وقت مشاوره خود را رزرو نمایید. محصولات از جمله سی دی، دی وی دی و کتاب ها را خریداری و دانلود نمایید و یا برای کارگاه ها و سمینار ها نام نویسی کنید. همچنین شما می توانید به برنامه های تلویزیونی و رادیویی دکتر سایان و یا آقای مورگن به صورت رایگان دسترسی داشته باشید. اپلیکیشن Embrace Growth را امروز از اپستور دانلود کنید.